Chatsworth House is a very big building, which has evolved over the centuries. The first house that my family built here was about 1550. Since then, up until now, there's been 16 generations of my family living here. Since 1981, it's been managed and run by a charity called the Chatsworth House Trust, which my father set up. And the charity's objective is that this house, the garden and the park, are available for the enjoyment of many hundreds of thousands of visitors every year. We really exist for the public to enjoy this extraordinary heritage. The charitable income uh, each year is around about £15 million and that is sourced from visitor admissions to the house and garden, any net profit we make from the events that are held across the estate, from our very loyal friends of Chatsworth and from corporate sponsorship, grant funding and individual donations. All of the income generated pays for the operating and the running costs of the charity and any surplus is used for conservation and restoration work and meeting our other charitable objectives. As you can imagine, looking after a place like Chatsworth, the maintenance and conservation needs are high. Currently, we think we've got an urgent object conservation backlog in around £1.5 million. That includes anything from painting conservation, textile conservation, works of art. But that doesn't take into account any of the major structural renovations we'd like to do across the estate. Structural renovations, we estimate, will cost the Trust about £30 million. Our ambition is to ensure that people are able to experience and enjoy all that Chatsworth has to offer for many years to come. We're in the North Wing, and the North Wing is a sort of a series of rooms that were built during the 19th century by the 6th Duke of Devonshire. And those rooms were really to support the kind of real popularity of house parties during that era. And obviously house parties required large areas to entertain, so we have a great dining room built, we have beautiful sculpture galleries where people can enjoy the 6th Duke's collections, but it also needed a massive army of people to support that activity. There were a lot of servants at that time who would required places to work, places to eat, places to sleep and a lot of the sort of parts of the house were actually built to support those activities during that time. And what's really interesting here is you start to see some of the spaces that really kind of hark back to the old times so you've got like the butler's pantry here and then down this long corridor is what we now use as our main archive but was actually the main servants hall where they would have eaten their meals during the day. One of the most interesting parts of the North Wing, which is now our joiners workshop, but was, back in the day, the actual main kitchen for the house. The North Wing project here at Chatsworth would be fantastic for us. We have a lot of primary sources about what life was like, and we really want to share that with our visitors. It would be a massive undertaking. We would actually have to move workshops out, we would have to move the archive, we would have to move massive collection stores. And I think we all have the excitement of what could be. This is a sort of unparalleled opportunity to really develop this suite of rooms and spaces to show our visitors. This is the Chatsworth Cascade, an amazing water feature that was the centrepiece of the first Duke's incredible formal garden here over 300 years ago. It's over 190 metres long. All of the water coming down the Cascade is gravity fed. It's gathered from rainfall on our moors into our lakes and then comes down the hill and feeds the Cascade. That water then goes underground and feeds other fountains and ponds within the garden. The stone is becoming very fragile, the water is now leaking through the stone, and if that continues, there's a danger that it could undermine it, the steps could start to move, then it actually gets to a point where we can't operate because it's not safe to do so. Repairing the cascade is a huge task. We need to remove all of the stones, we need to stop the water moving through the fabric, and then we need to put it all back together. So it will take many months and a huge cost to repair it. This is definitely a national treasure. People come back specially year after year to enjoy it, to paddle in it, to admire it. It's essential to safeguard this really important historic feature. The contents of the Devonshire collection ranges from enormous things like the state chariot to really small pieces. So the variety of things that we care for is vast. It's tremendously exciting to care for these objects, research them, curate them, and to be able to share them. 
The Devonshire Parole was made in 1856 and was commissioned by the 6th Duke of Devonshire from a jeweller called C.F. Hancocks. The Parole is a hugely precious item. It's very unusual and the fact that all seven pieces survive. It has been worn to a number of events. Within one of the headpieces, the diadem, were set two small portrait miniatures in a green enamelled gold locket. They're so damaged that they're unrecognisable. We'd really like to do some scientific investigation and also look at inventories from property that used to belong to the family to see if we can discover the maker and possibly even the sitters. The state coach is a type of vehicle known as a chariot because it seats two people rather than the four people that sit in a coach. It's likely that it was made by Hooper & Co somewhere between 1830 and 1850. The chariot was most recently used in 1953 to go to the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II where Andrew, the 11th Duke of Devonshire, his wife Deborah and their then nine-year-old son, who's the current Duke of Devonshire, rode in it together through the streets of London to attend the coronation. The state chariot is a vehicle which means that it's designed to be used and that also means that it's showing signs of wear. And what we'd really like to do is to conserve this so that people can continue to enjoy it in future. Any contribution to a project like this is guaranteed to uncover something interesting which acts as a kind of legacy for the collection. We have such a wealth of stories here at Chatsworth and aligned with that is our educational objectives. We want children from primary school all the way through to postgraduate students to be able to come and learn from the archive and the collection at Chatsworth. I'm currently stood in one of our archives at Chatsworth in the old laundry and it would be one of our great ambitions to be able to digitise this archive so even more people across the world actually would be able to access the wealth of information and stories which are contained within this archive. What's so special about Chatsworth is that it's been in the hands of the same family for over 500 years and the collection has remained pretty much intact. There are so many projects that people can give support to and feel like they're really playing a part in ensuring the longer term legacy of Chatsworth. Chatsworth, the house garden and park, is a really important part of English culture. It's developed over hundreds of years. I hope it will continue to develop. There's so much work to be done, so many exciting projects to be undertaken, so much more education that we can do, and that is something we are passionate about.